Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. And today we're looking at creating a pattern swatch of a rotated pattern. So you've got a pattern that you really like, you want to rotate it, but from that rotated design, you want to make another repeating pattern swatch. This is not easy. It's not actually always going to work, but it is a pretty good concept to at least give it a try. So what I've got here is a design. Now this design is obviously sort of like an X, but if I want to rotate it and make a pattern from the rotated elements, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with a rectangle. So I'm going to the rectangle tool. I'm just going to click in the document. I'm making a rectangle a thousand by a thousand pixels. This is going to stay a vector shape. So it doesn't really matter about the size that you're working at, but you need to see enough of the repeat to actually see what you're doing. So what I'm going to do, first of all, this is this pattern over here. I'm going to rotate it. So I'm going to choose Object, Transform. I'm actually going to use Transform Each because I like that as a rotation option. Now let me just zero this back out again. Okay, so this is the original design. So I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees. But at the same time, I'd also like to make it a bit larger. So I'm going to take it up to 200%. What I have to do though is to make sure that I've got this element again in this design. So I'm looking at this little curl here and I'm going across horizontally and making sure that I can see it again. If I can't see it, I don't probably have enough to do a repeat, so I'll want to scale it back down again. Likewise, here, what I'm going to do is look for this element again vertically. So go down, 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 down. There it is vertically. Yes, we should be okay to get our pattern out of this. If we couldn't see this element here, if this design were too big, then we'd need to scale it back down again. So let me just click okay. So this is the element that we're going to make a pattern from, but because it's already filled with a pattern, you can't make a pattern from a pattern. So the very next thing we're going to do is expand this. So I'm going to choose object and then expand. And I'm just going to click okay. And I'm going to wait as it looks like my computer's about to crash. Now yours might be fast at this, yours might be slow at it. Just give it time to operate. So let's see what we've got right now. So what I've got here is this is a group. That's this group here. This one here is this one over here. So just be clear about what we're working with. So this is the element that we're working with. Let's have a look and see what's in there. Well, it's a clipping group. It's got a rectangle and it's got all of these shapes here. So what we're going to do is we're going to expand it. We're just going to make it easier on the computer and easier on ourselves to minimize the number of elements that we're taking with us. So open up your clipping group because you're going to see a clipping group and go and get the rectangle. It's going to be the topmost element. It's always the topmost element and you're going to drag it out of the clipping group. And don't worry that everything looks like it's failed because that's exactly what it should look like. Then you're going to select your clipping group and you're going to select your rectangle. I'm just going to shift click on it. It's probably easier to do that in the layers palette than try and do it over here. So you have a rectangle on top, even though we can't see it there, it is a rectangle. We know it was used as a clipping group. It's perfect, it's in exactly the right spot. And we've got all the elements for our pattern. So we're going to use the crop tool and the crop tool we're going to use is the one in the Pathfinder. So open up your Pathfinder palette. Of course, you can get to that by choosing window and then Pathfinder. Come down here to the bottom row and this is the crop icon and you're going to click on that and you're going to wait again because it may take some time and it may sort of upset your screen like it's upsetting mine and just give it time to do its business. It's cropping a whole heap of elements, so it will take some time potentially. But what we're trying to do is actually minimize the number of elements that we're going to take into the pattern. So we're spending a bit of time cleaning things up in the hopes that when we go to make the pattern, we won't crash the machine just trying to make the pattern. So this is now completed and you'll see that there's nothing outside the cropped area, but let's go back into the LAS palette. Let's go into our group and just see what we've got. Well, these are a whole heap of elements and they're exactly as they should be. They are filled elements, but go down to the very bottom of this group because down the bottom, potentially like me, you're going to find some shapes that are just empty. If I select on this, you can see over here that it doesn't have a fill and it doesn't have a stroke. And there are lots of these. 
So I'm going to remove them because again, there's no point in trying to make a pattern with elements that are just nothings. So I'm going to the select option. I'm going to choose same and appearance because I have one of them selected. And so I can go and select absolutely everything else that has no fill and no stroke. In other words, we're just not seeing it. And I'm just going to press delete. So that's cleaned the document up as much as I possibly can. Everything that's left here is actually an element in the pattern. So I'm going to select this. It's actually not a pattern any longer. It's just a series of elements. But what we want to do is now make it into a pattern so that we have a pattern of something that is at a different angle to our original. So with all of these elements selected, I'm going to choose Object Pattern Make. So this is not going to line up and it never was designed to line up. So don't worry that it doesn't line up at this stage because it's not supposed to. But what we're going to do is decrease the width and the height to make it line up. Now to make it a little easier for you to see, I'm going to view and I'm going to hide my artboards because that puts white behind it. And this is the problem line here. So what I'm going to do is link these two and I'm just going to start decreasing these values. And what I want to do is line everything up so that these shapes overlap each other. And for this, I've already tested this one and I know that at 566, six, it's going to line up and it's lining up vertically and horizontally. That may not be the case for your pattern. You may need to unlink this and change the vertical value separately to get them to line up. But what you're looking for is what is a perfectly good looking pattern. I'm going to show the tile edge here because the tile edge is where the problems are going to be. So if you've got issues, they're going to be along this tile edge here. So you can turn it off and turn it on and just check these areas and make sure that you are not out of alignment. Let's tip this out of alignment. Here it's out of alignment. So you're just looking at something or looking for something that just looks wrong. So this is looking perfect. It's absolutely perfect pattern. So what I'm going to do is click done. And that adds this as a pattern to the pattern swatches. So I'm going to choose view and I'm going to show my artboards again. Let's just see where we are. This is my original pattern and this is the elements that I used to make the second pattern. Well, I don't need those any longer. So I'm going to that group and I'm just going to delete it. So I have a rectangle here filled with the original pattern that I then rotated and then made a second pattern from. To look at that second pattern, we're going to select the object here and just click to apply the pattern to it. So there's the original in a sort of X shape. Here is our rotated one that is itself now made into a seamless repeating pattern. Now, I can't promise that it's going to work every time, but if you have a design that you really like, but you would prefer it to be rotated, and then you want a rotated swatch from that, for example, to send to Spoonflower, because Spoonflower insists that you give it the pattern swatch. You can't give it a document filled with the pattern and expect it to make a repeating element. It just doesn't work that way. So if you need that particular design to be rotated and you have to create a pattern from another pattern, that's one way that I would suggest that you try to do it. I hope that this has been of some help to you. I hope that you've learned things about Illustrator of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.